All right, everybody, this is the second set of notes uh, about mythology. Again, if you're taking notes on a piece of paper, this is how it is. Uh, it's That's the title. That's not the essential question. There is not one, actually, for this one, but all the notes will go in this area, and all the questions and drawings and stuff will go in this area. The name, date, and period at the top. As usual, anything in yellow, make sure you shorten, use abbreviations or symbols or something, put it in your own words. Anything in red, make sure you... Write down exactly anything green you do not have to write at all. So this is Introduction to Greek Mythology. What are What is mythology? Well, it's the study of myths. And uh, myths are stories about gods and other heroes and things, which are handed down orally or by speaking from one generation to another. It's kind of like if you get... Uh, a bedtime story, you know that they're probably not real, but um, they're entertaining and uh, they make you go to sleep and things like that. So pretty good. What they are trying to do is uh, explain nature, like where the earth come from, where the mountains come from, seasons, all different kinds of stuff, where we came from and where the gods come from. So just explaining things that we have like scientific explanations for today besides gods and things. They are polytheistic. Poly is many. Theism or theo is God, and ism is like believing. So the believing of many gods. Um, we've already gone over many, many cultures that were believing in many gods. But why do we study Greek mythology? It's interesting. It's entertaining. Um, it does show us how they viewed the world, and it is constantly being referenced today. For example, Homer Simpson is probably named after Homer, who made the Iliad and the Odyssey that I'll go over a little bit later. Amazon is probably named after, or could be, named after the Amazonian women, kind of like the Wonder Woman Amazons. Tridents, uh, as we know, are the symbol for Poseidon. Mercury is the Roman god uh, that is equivalent or equals to... Um, Oh my gosh, I just spaced out. Um, Hermes, sorry, Hermes. Uh, and then Nike is the Greek goddess Victory, so that makes sense for Nike. And then this guy is called Narcissus, who is the, the we get the word narcissist from. It's all about himself. Story goes, he looked at, he was so, thought so much of himself that nobody would ever date him. And so he was cursed. Uh, and, uh, and when he looked into a river or a reflection of himself, he could not take his eyes away, even for food. And so he died that way. Of short story. Let me tell you about the creation of the world according to Greek mythology. So first there is chaos. And out of this chaos emerge two beings, Gaia, which, which would become Earth, and Uranus, which would become the sky or the heavens, the universe. They have several kids. As you can see, half of them are the Titans, half of them are monsters, including Three cyclops, one-eyed creatures, as you can see there, and three hecatonkeres, uh, the hundred hands people. They just have a hundred hands, a lot of hands, no eyes or anything like that. But yeah, the monsters. Uranus hated all of his children, but especially the monsters. So he locked up the monsters in a underworld prison called Tartarus. Uh, and obviously the mom's upset because that's her kids and asked the other kids to help uh, get them out. Uh, and Kronos, the youngest and strongest, decided, OK, that's cool. I'm going to overthrow my father and just take over and let them free. So he does. He takes his sister, Rhea, for a wife. Yes, I know that's super gross, but that was what happens in Greek mythology a lot. And divided the earth amongst his fellow siblings, the Titans. They had six kids, which we call the Olympians. Um, Kronos also feared that his children, the Olympians, would overthrow him. So he decided to get rid of them by swallowing them whole, um, except for the last one, because the mom didn't like him kind of swallowing the kids. Uh, and so he replaced the baby, Zeus, with a stone. And uh, Kronos didn't recognize this for some reason and uh, swallowed it. <clears throat> And uh, instead, Zeus grew up on an island known as Crete, where uh, the Mino Minoans were. We talk talked about the palace and all that stuff there. When Zeus was grown, he came back and he basically punched 
Kronos in the stomach, and he threw up all of his siblings who were fully grown now, and they raged war against the father Kronos. They ended up winning because the monsters were on his side, uh, and Kronos only had his siblings, and that was it. So Zeus ends up winning, divides the world amongst his brothers and sisters. So here's who they are. Zeus is the king of the gods. He's the ruler of everyone, all the gods. He uh, rules on Mount Olympus, which is actually a, a mountain in Greece. Uh, and he's god of sky and thunder. His uh, symbols are the thunderbolt, eagle, bull, oak tree, any of those you'll see with uh, Zeus as well. His siblings are Poseidon, Hades, Hestia, Demeter, and Hera. And they have kids of their own that become the 12 Olympians. Uh, he is known for having many affairs and has a lot of offspring. Can't really go into a whole lot of myths with him, but very interesting person. His wife and sister, like I said earlier, it's kind of a myth thing. It's kind of gross. Actually, it is gross. Uh, so make sure, you know, it's, just know it and you'll be fine. Uh, of Zeus, she's the queen of the Olympians, goddess of childbirth and marriage. Her symbol is the pomegranate. Uh, she is very revengeful. She does not like Zeus having affairs, so she turns the girls that he has affairs with into plants and animals and all different kinds of things. Poseidon is the god of the sea and horses and earthquakes. Now, you might be saying horses. That's not a sea thing, um, regardless of seahorses. But the story goes that he was in love with Demeter, and she wanted to go date her. And Demeter basically said, no, the only way I'll date you is if you make the best animal ever. And so he did a lot of the sea things, sea creatures, and she said no. And then he finally made a land animal called the horse. And she loved it, and they went out for a little bit. Didn't come to anything, but that's why he's known as the god of horses. Uh, he mostly spends his time underwater, and his symbols are the trident, dolphin, and horses. Hestia is the goddess of the hearth, which is a fireplace in the home and the house. She's honored at mealtimes. She doesn't have a lot of myths with her uh, because she's pretty mild. She's pretty kind. Uh, she doesn't really do anything. She just kind of stays at home. Um, so she is mostly represented by getting together, um, being happy, that kind of stuff. Demeter is the goddess of agriculture. She's carrying wheat, usually, uh, but also poppies like a flower or um, cornucopia are also her symbols as well. Her big um, myth is, involves Hades and Persephone. Her Persephone is her daughter. Hades is the god of the underworld, which go in a second, go over in a second. Uh, Hades fell in love with Persephone, and she, he stole her and took her down to the underworld. She ate a pomegranate seed, actually six of them, and she was not allowed to leave because if you ate anything in the underworld, you're not allowed to leave. Uh, Demeter was kind of sad uh, about this and mad, and so they made a deal where Persephone could come up to the earth to see her mom for about six months of the year and then go back down the other six months of the year. This explains, and when it gets uh, warm and nice and everything like that, that means Demeter is happy, and that happens during the spring and summertime. Um, and then when it, she goes away, when it's cold and gray, usually, uh, then she it's winter and fall. So that explains the seasons. Aphrodite is the goddess of love, beauty, and fertility. Um, she could be the daughter of Zeus or Dione, but probably was born out of sea foam. If you don't know what sea foam is, it's like the foam from the waves. Um, so that's probably more likely. But her she is her symbol is the dove because of purity and things like that. Um, her claim to fame, her little claim to fame, I guess, I'll go with, is that she started the Trojan War. Uh, and the Trojan War is between Troy and Greece. And here's kind of what happened. There is a goddess of chaos. Eris, E-R-I-S, who basically didn't get invited to a wedding, and everybody else did, and she was mad about it, so she said, okay, I'm going to make some chaos. So she created a golden apple that said, to the fairest on it, and she threw it on the table where Aphrodite, Hera, um, Aphrodite, Hera, and Athena, who we'll talk about in a second, were all sitting. Um, they all wanted the apple, because they all thought they were the fairest, right? And uh, they fought over it, and they decided, hey, Zeus, why don't you judge us to see who's the best? Zeus was like, no way. I don't want to get slapped or whatever because of 
who I choose is wrong. So he got a person to do it named Paris. And uh, they all offered him stuff. Uh, he, but eventually he went with Aphrodite, who offered him the most beautiful woman in the world, and at that time was named Helen. So he and Helen lived in Greece, and Paris lived in Troy. Troy went and stole Helen. Uh, they fell in love, and they went back to Troy. And uh, that is what started the Civil War because she was or the Trojan War because the dad of uh, Helen was a king and he didn't like his daughter getting stolen. So that started the war. But that's kind of it. Athena is the goddess of wisdom and war. She's the patron goddess of Athens. I talked to you about Batmeth earlier, protector of the city. She is the favorite daughter of Zeus. The story goes that she might have been cracked out of his head or sewn into his leg and then and when she was all grown she came out um but another one is between her and ariadne ariadne uh was a very good weaver and she knew she was good and she basically said she was better than athena uh and athena is also of crass people as well by the way like yarn and stuff like that and um she basically challenged her to a Athena challenged her to prove her skills, and eventually she basically wove or stitched a picture that made fun of the gods, and Athena was like, uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. And so she uh, made her into a spider so she could spin into the webs forever, because that's what she wanted to do as a punishment. So there you go. Arachne, not Aradne, sorry. Um, and uh, Hades is the god of the underworld. We already know about him. He's king of the dead. Cerberus is his dog, three-headed dog. He carries a bident, which is two, little fork thing, and a, a cypress tree. And I already talked to you about Persephone and Demeter, so. But myths are not only about gods. They're also about heroes. And there's a lot of stories about heroes, such as Hercules um, and Jason and Theseus and the Minotaur, all that kind of stuff. Um, but they all have specific traits, which I'm not going to get too much into, but they're supposed to have like a special weapon, go on a venture quest, uh, prove himself, all different kinds of stuff. There are some modern day heroes, as you can see here, Harry Potter, uh, Frodo Baggins, Simba, that they all have to avenge their father's death or go on a quest or find something or whatever. So, um, being that the Greeks were really good at literature, an epic poem. They would write other stuff. An epic poem, for example, is a long narrative or a story poem. It's still a poem because of the way it's written, and then it's just a story. Um, examples of this are the Iliad and the Odyssey. Odyssey is the trip back from the Trojan War. The Iliad is at the Trojan War. Um, and uh, they, those two are written by Homer. There's the example. Not only that, but they also wrote lyric poetry, which is just poetry set to music. Most famous poet, lyric poet was Sappho, who was female, even though most poets were males. And finally, they also wrote uh, fables, which are stories taught uh, that taught people important lessons. And the most famous were Aesop's fables, including the tortoise and the hare. So not too much about mythology. That's kind of just some basic information. So hopefully you enjoy it. And if you didn't get any notes, hopefully that'll be good for you.